police court and the high court respectively. To institute criminal proceedings against any person institute criminal proceedings against any person before any court these charges before you that then takes up to the substance of the charges before you But Jonah, just before I get to the substance, allow me to address a number of issues which we think are outside your jurisdiction and which, despite your attempts to be courageous and or bold, you cannot get into. That this court cannot enforce fundamental, sorry, constitutional rights and fundamental freedoms outside Article 25A and B. For example, a mention has been made as to the improper or irrational cancellation of a certificate of firearms contrary to the provisions of article 47 this court cannot look into that however bold and courageous that is outside article 25a and b so it means the court must shut its eyes to article 47 Now, this is not to say that this court is exempt from the provisions of Article 10 of the Constitution on the national values and principles of governance. This court is bound, but from a holistic interpretation of Article 10, vis-à-vis -vis judicial authority under Article 159, vis-a-vis -vis the powers of the DPP under Article 157.6a. Yes, uh, I'm trying to get you and record. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Yes. I, I, I have a problem with my You said the court is bound, is indeed bound by Article 10, but vis-a-vis? Vis-a-vis -vis judicial authority under Article 159. <coughs> vis a -vis the power, prosecutorial powers of the DPP under Article 157.6a. Together with Sections 6 and Section 8 of the Magistrates' Courts Act, that a holistic interpretation of thereof, <coughs> reminds this court that a number of actions you've been asked to do are within the province of the High Court under Article 165, sub-Article 3. Article 165, sub-Article 3. In other words, the jurisdiction to determine whether an act or omission alleged to have been done under the Constitution is in violation with the Constitution belongs to the High Court and not this Court. If the arrest of Honorable uh, Jimmy Wanjigi and all the second accused person violated the Constitution, or rather whether or not the arrest, whether there were 50 police officers and we, we, we don't take it very lightly, those, those, those statements. Whether there were 200 police officers and therefore the action of the police were in violation of the Constitution, that determination can only be done by the High Court under Article 165, sub Article 3. And this is not to say that the police should get scot free where there are you know, established violations of the Constitution.
and the Constitution has provided for the means to deal with that, including the establishment of the Independent Policing Oversight Authority. Independent Policing Oversight Authority with a mandate to investigate such allegations and to punish or recommend for prosecution such police officers. So that, Your Honor, personally, I am very sorry, very sympathetic about the issues raised against the police, and which I have no reason to doubt, but that this court has no jurisdiction to make a determination thereof. And without jurisdiction, you down your pen on that issue. Your Honor, are the police in contempt of the orders of the Honorable Bahati Muamuye? Again, this court has no jurisdiction to enforce unless the orders are directed to the court to reject charges. The court that issued the orders is the proper court to enforce its strength for violation, if at all, of its orders. You know, if police robbed the family of Honorable Wanjigi, again, this court cannot make that determination. But luckily, Your Honor, as Chief Justice Emeritus William Mutunga said, there is no violation of the Constitution that has no remedy. A remedy lies, and it does not mean that if this court, in exercise of jurisdiction, limits its entertaining of the issues raised, that the accused persons or their advocates in that case, who are also violated, will have nowhere to go they actually have the High Court to go to. And they have, been, they have gone to the High Court. In a sense, therefore, Your Honor, still on the question of jurisdiction, what is before you is very limited. That takes me to the substance of the charges. Does this court have power to reject charges before it? Yes, we agree easily with the defense. But we disagree on the basis they are inviting you to reject the charges. And from a criminal law perspective, this court can only reject charges in the following cases. where the particulars of the charge do not or are not in consonance with, with the, sorry, where the evidence is not in consonance with the charges or the particulars, or the particulars are not in consonance with the statement of the charge. You know, that power is granted under section 89, subsection 5 of the Criminal Procedure Code. 89, subsection 5 of the Criminal Procedure Code, that this court can reject charges on that basis. You can also reject charges where the charges are bad for duplicity or they are rather duplex. There is no allegation before you that these charges are duplex. So that a charge may not be defective as proposed by the defense for the reason that the actions leading to the charge were in violation of the Constitution. I am owed or owed to be in the presence of very senior counsel this morning. I am uh, comparatively younger in the profession. But I would appreciate if I am shown any authority. You know, we are the inherent power of the court. 
Th thank you for that reminder. Yona, this is what... The <laughs> Do I record you in brackets? Senior <laughs> counsel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that brings me back to that question of jurisdiction. Allow me to just read a quote from uh, the now retired criminal law guru, Justice Bonuonga. And this is what he said in respect of what you've been invited to rely on as inherent jurisdiction. I I'll quote, I didn't expect this to come up, but I'll provide a copy of this decision. Mm -hmm. The decision is Elijah Nyakebendo Onsongo. Elijah Nyakebendo Nyakebondo. Nyake Bondo, N Y A K E B O N D O. Elijah Nyake Bondo on Songo versus Republic, 2017 Kenya Law Reports. And this is what the learned judge said. First, a subordinate magisterial court, which is this court, including a court of senior principal magistrate, only has jurisdiction as may be conferred upon it by any statutory law, including the Constitution. In criminal matters, as in the instant application, such courts do not have inherent powers. It is important to point out that such courts only have inherent powers in civil matters in terms of Section 3A of the Civil Procedure Act. So that another thing as regards your jurisdiction is that you do not have inherent jurisdiction. Your jurisdiction is given by law only. The Constitution the Magistrates' Court Act, the Criminal Procedure Court, and the Penal Court in respect of criminal law. 